Hi, Corpus Christi. Welcome to another Better Way Ministry Bible Study. Today is going to be a continuation of the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> it says that we are to leave behind the doctrines of Christ so that we can go on unto perfection. And you know, you have to know what the doctrines are. He's not saying just leave them behind, although there are some that would probably teach that. Nevertheless, we have a King James Bible. And if you notice, there's nothing but scripture over here. My faith in this broadcast is not in my ability to speak to you, to be an orator, that my understanding might help you. This word right here, this will change your eternal destiny. If you are in Christ, it'll enrich your life so that you call those things that are not as though they are. And they shall become what you say. God said whatsoever his children speak, that's what he'll do. You want to know how much God loves you? When you ponder the cross of Jesus Christ, that he loved you when you were dead in sins, and afterwards he, his faithfulness, his obedience, his righteousness, he shares with you. You know, there's nothing about this predicated on your ability. Even being partaker of his divine nature is predicated on the exceeding great and precious promises. That is the thing that God said to fear. He did not say, fear man. But he did say, fear lest a promise being left you of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. You know, with TV being what it is today, um, there is no faith on it. There's no. It's it's an attack against your faith from from take a pill. Ask your doctor. Well, if your doctor is the great physician Jesus, ask him about taking pills. Why would you want to go to the apothecary when you can have his saving health? See, when you come into his presence and you live in his presence, that's what the Holy Ghost is about. That's what Jesus ushered in was Holy Ghost power. He didn't leave anything to our own. To our own. Every word of God is pure and he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. For I bear them record. That they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You know, that's where most of the church lies today. Not necessarily the world, but the Word. The Word that used to be the all consuming fire that I can't, if you're within the sound of my voice, and you don't read your word, check out your salvation. Check out your salvation. You can't go about and establish your own righteousness. You can't go out and be a do-gooder in your own understanding. My Bible says, look not to the left or the right. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established in God. For he that has the rest of God has ceased from his own works. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. What's all of our iniquities? Going about doing the things that we do in our own way. You know, it's the Holy Ghost of God that will come down and will compare scriptures with your actions. You want the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to get power. Jesus said, go and wait in Jerusalem. He, says, he told those that were believers. He said, don't do anything. Just wait. Wait for the Holy Ghost. You're going to get power when you get the Holy Ghost. Jesus did not start his ministry until he received the Holy Ghost at his baptism. He went 
His ministry officially started right then. When he got baptized to fulfill all righteousness, he was not baptized for his repentance, but to fulfill all righteousness. So he received the Spirit of God came down on him and the Holy Ghost came down on him. The Spirit led him into the wilderness and the Holy Ghost gave him the power to defeat Satan right there. And if you're ever going to defeat Satan, you're only going to do it by the Holy Ghost. Nobody in the Old Testament did. They were pushed this way, pushed that way. It's the grace and mercy of God. It's still grace and mercy of God, but you can live, we can live in the kingdom of God. That is the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. How many sick people are joyful? I mean, you can have joy from time to time, but the joy, the exceeding burning joy down in the bottom of your soul that you just love everything that God is doing in your life, that he's the one that pays your bills, that he's the one that heals your body, he's the one that leads you into the righteousness, he's the one who dangles good things out in front of you, just the blessings overtake you. That's to those who are filled with the Holy Ghost. To those that have the Holy Ghost, you want the Holy Ghost. That was the whole purpose of the Christ coming, that you could have the Holy Ghost. But the way into the Holy of Holies was not yet made until Jesus did that with his own blood. So, we must understand the things that I teach, the whole Bible study that I teach, it's all predicated on you having the Holy Ghost. You don't want to miss out on the Holy Ghost, people. And I'm not talking about tongues. I'm talking about the power of God that you can only have with the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. It's here. It's available right now. You do not have to be worried. You do not have to be you don't have to be sick and suffering. You don't have to be diseased. You don't have to be behind in any promise from God. Nothing. You can have the Holy Ghost that created the heavens and the earth. And he will live within you. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will keep you. He will safety is of the Lord. <laughs> In this day, in these last days, safety's of the Lord. Safety's of the Lord, and it always has been. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in his heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, a confession comes from that which you believe within your heart. We have a lot of recitals going on nowadays, calling the recital a confession. <laughs> Here, say this after me. Okay, you just confessed. <laughs> or, say this after me. Oh, you've just been born again because you spoke words. People, it's a lot more than that. God is after your heart and soul. He wants to sanctify you. Sanctifying you is not a process of calling on God in one prayer and bingo. You're there, you're in, you're perfect, you're whole, and you're never going to... No, the sanctification takes place immediately. You get sealed with the Spirit of God, and He begins to sanctify you. How? By leading you into the Word of God. By causing you to stop doing the things that you used to. By, getting, by leading you into the baptism for the remission of your sins so that you can receive the Holy Ghost. And boy, when you get Holy Ghost power, oh, you're driving down the road. <laughs> you're driving down the road. And uh, he sits down beside you in the car or you're driving down the road and he'll start reasoning with you. The Holy Ghost brings scripture to your mind. The devil does not do that. The devil, you bring scripture, twisted scripture. The Holy Ghost says, he starts looking at what you're doing, at what you're allowing in your life compared to the verses. See? The power of God at work in you is going to work on you. It's not that you're going to turn the power of God loose in the whole world. No. We're going to turn the power of God loose in you, and then when you go and you speak the word, you have the power of God. See? It's the word of His power. Power is always God's. It's all His. But what saith it? 
The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. But a confession unto salvation. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You've got to get into the word. You've got to understand the word propitiation. You've got to understand why Christ is a propitiation for your sins. Remember what this thing said up here? We have all, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You can't minister God's word his own way. You can't live your life your own way. You, what is the Lord's? We're to take our cross daily. We're supposed the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's all about His will in your life. Ponder the path of thy feet. Turn not to the left nor to the right. If you're in a fight, I love it. They, these kids sing a song. If you're in a fight, the Lord has taught me, don't turn left, don't turn right. If I just stand, I'll win this fight. And you know, it's the Holy Ghost of God that will go before you. Happy is the people that have the God of Jacob for their help. <laughs> That's an awesome verse. But I want to tell you, you got to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, every one of you. Oops. Then said Peter, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall. That's that will there. It says shall. That's an awesome word, shall. Without regard to any other circumstance, this is going to take place. So, if you'll obey God and repent, if you'll obey God and get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What an awesome thing. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death. I'm going to quickly go over this. Because, and you can go into a greater depth, but we got to get on with our Bible study. But at the beginning of this, everything, every single promise is to those who are in Christ, the, the true believers. Not the believing believers who put Jesus on the cross, or the non-believing believers that put Jesus on the cross. It's the for the believing believers. And the test is very simple to know if you are in the Christ. It is very simple. It starts just by calling on his name. But that's the start. It's like, don't look back. Don't turn back. Don't look back. Don't go back. The Holy Ghost is going to take you straight forward. The Spirit of God will lead you right straight into his word. And make it, make it that you will understand what you are to do when you're in iniquity. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, his death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. See? That's why you need the Holy Ghost. You need the power from God to not walk like you used to walk when you come up out of the baptism waters. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Uh, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him and hath that the body of sin might be destroyed. That's an important statement. That henceforth we should not serve sin. There is a circumcision of your heart. Where did, where did Jesus say sin happened? He goes, he's standing there that day and he goes, hey, there's nothing that goes in your mouth that can defile you. Whew. There were 30,000 things that going in your mouth could defile you according to the word of God. And Jesus stood there and said, hey, there's nothing going in your mouth that can defile you. <laughs> That's partly why they wanted to kill him. Uh, he said, the things that come out of you out of your mouth proceed from your heart. Adulteries, murderers, fornications, lascivious, all those things that he said. Coming out of your, that defiles the man. See? It's not going in. Whatever goes in, it's going to go to your belly and psh, out to the drop. So, 
when he said that that day, it's a heart. It's the heart that has to have be circumcised. And that's where the body of sin lives, in your heart. But you have to destroy it. And you do, how do you do that? Repent. Be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. And in the remission of your sins, you're going to destroy the body of sin. Look at this. And you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. So you got to put off the body of the sins of the flesh. How? By the circumcision of Christ. What did we just say that was? It's a circumcision of your heart. And you're going to bury that old man, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. How do you understand the faith of the operation of God? How do you understand the operation of God? If all you've done is recite a bunch of words and somebody pronounced and put a stamp on your forehead and said, okay, now you've been born again. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against calling on Jesus' name. But that's the start. You've got to get into the Word, or the devil is going to take you and twist you up and twist your life. But you have to have faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Well, if you don't understand the operation of God, that body of the sins gets cut off of your heart. It's the circumcision, just like in the Old Testament, the circumcision of man. Well, they ended up with a body part, people. That body part had to be buried. Women didn't have that body part. They weren't, the covenant was not, the. they were not the possession of the covenant in an outward example of their flesh. It's impossible. But not now, not with Christ. You have your own covenant as well as men and women of both alike. And you both get circumcised, but it's just as literal as it was today. Today, as it was for men in the Old Testament. Just as literal. You're going to cut off the body of the sins of the flesh, and they are going to be buried with Christ. And then, through faith in the operation of God, you're going to be raised from the dead. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. He that believeth on me. Here's, a, here's the, here you take your own spiritual temperature. He that believeth on me, as scripture has said, not like the people say, if you want to believe on Jesus as scripture says and not like people tell you to believe, listen to what Jesus said then. He that believeth on me, as scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do you have those rivers of living water? And if not, get back into this word until you have the rivers of living water coming out of your belly. That's what you're after. That's how the Holy Ghost is going to come and cause you to be able to conquer the works of darkness in your life that rivers of living water are going to flow out of you. That's his spirit. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's Jesus. He's the propitiation. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. You get the Holy Ghost by obeying God. I'll say it again. You get the Holy Ghost by obeying God. Everything is about obeying. Yes, you can call. And, and yes, that's the beginning when you call on His name. And that is the beginning. But that's all that it, that it is. The Bible says, To as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. The people that receive Jesus Christ, they're not instantly in Christ. You have, you're not instant, well, let me say that, let me say that again. You're in Christ, but you're not instantly his son. A lot of people teach that. 
you are going to have to prepare the way of the Lord. That's the repentance. John the Baptist preached, prepare the way of the Lord. Wow. Well, repent. Change your actions. Repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. That's where you cut off the body of the sins of the flesh. Why? So God himself can come and live in you. Anybody in the Old, anybody in the Old Testament that got close and touched God died. Uzziah put his hand on the ark and he died. When they were in the temple and they went into the Holy of Holies and the high priest alone went in there once a year, if he didn't offer for himself first, he died. When, when God came down on top of that mountain, Mount Sinai, and he was going to hand, he was going to hand out and give Moses the Ten Commandments. Any man or animal that touched the mount that God was on was to die. Why? Because the way into the Holy Holies was not made. We get, we get the Holy Ghost to dwell within us. We become the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. What an awesome promise from God. He'll live in there. He'll take that word. He will cause you to understand where you are walking in the reality of what you're doing is contrary to his word. It's easy for us to see, oh, we want to turn the power of God loose in other people's lives and help them out because we see where they're wrong. The hard part that the Holy Ghost only can do is to show you where you're wrong. Whoa! Oh, the guy in the mirror. Oh, yeah. We got to get him fixed. We got to get him into the Holy Ghost. The guy in the mirror. Well, you'll get the Holy Ghost when you obey God. Now, today's lesson. The doctrine of Christ, repentance from dead works, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. How is it that we, okay, exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust when you understand how they op how the promises operate in your life they come from the word of god you're going to believe that the word of god is pure i put that at the beginning because i'm going to tell you something you want to know that this word right here is pure when the storms of life come to your home and you have to know what to do. His word is pure. I cannot tell you enough. His word is pure. You can build your life on it. You can bet your life, you can bet the life of your grandchildren on it and know of a certainty when God, his counsel contained in a King James Bible, when God, he said, God willing, no, God more abundantly willing to show unto the heirs of promise. That's us, the heirs of promise, those in Christ. The immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath in which it was impossible for God to lie. He swore by his self. God wanted us to know so badly how immutable his counsel is. Immutable. It cannot change. There is no power to change his counsel. There's no power. He has all power. He didn't give it to anybody to change his counsel. You perform his counsel, you will obtain the promise. When you obtain the promise, you're going to be partaker of his divine nature. Huh. There's nothing that can change that anywhere. When Jesus, Jesus knew this, when he was led of the Spirit and went out into the, into the wilderness, he waited on the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came, he bound the strong man for every one of us. By the word of his power. 
devil came with twisted words. What did Jesus say? It is written. The devil came quoting scripture. Twisted. What did Jesus do? Quoted pure. Right back at him. And he wounded him. And he bound him. And it went from that day forward, he went through Satan's kingdom, doing anything it was that he wanted. Setting people free, turning them loose, getting them healed, literally giving sight to the blind. Holy Ghost power. Exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You know, you got how to be a Christian classes going on all over the place. And they'll, they'll try to educate you about your enemy, the devil. Every bit of that is from the devil. The devil is the one who's in charge of educating you about him. Because you know what God wants you to do? Learn about him. Your grace is going to be multiplied through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Your peace is going to be multiplied through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. There are no scriptures where he says, go learn about the devil so you can defeat him. Those people in the Old Testament have a perfect understanding and knew they had no power. When those people came to Jesus and they brought their sons and their daughters and they said, man, here's my son. The devil throws him in the fire. The devil throws him in the thing. The devil throws him over here. The devil's trying to kill him all the time. Took him to your disciples. They couldn't cast him out. He says, where is he? Bring him to me. The man knew the devil had him. And he knew he didn't have the power. You need Holy Ghost to get the power. You need a knowledge of God. You need a knowledge of Jesus. And your peace will be multiplied when you recognize, wow, how do I get the Holy Ghost? I get the body of sins cut off of me. You're dead to sin then. Sin has no more power over you, no more dominion over you. See? Isn't that awesome? So that you can have repentance from dead works. The things that you used to do, now you have power over them to choose to give yourself unto righteousness and holiness. Isn't that awesome? Oh, and then the blessings just overtake you. <laughs> oh, man, safety. Health. Ugh. There's not a thing in this life that this body wasn't created for that God won't fill you up. They that fear the Lord have no want. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. How has that happened? Does it happen because of it, it happens because of a knowledge of him that called you to glory and virtue. you got to have a knowledge of him. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Oh, hallelujah. Moreover, brethren, I would that you should not be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them Then that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were... Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. These are our examples. You might say he starts off by calling us brethren. See? 
Did you ever stop to consider Moses is your brother? Those people that went into the promised land are your brothers. The people you read about in the, in the Bible, they are your brethren. And what happened to your brothers? See, they all went, look at what it says again, with that in mind. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud. They, see, they become our fathers. We became Jews. We're New Testament Jews. We are in Israel. If you ain't in Israel, you are none of his. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all did eat the same spiritual meat. He's talking about the fathers, but with God, but some of them, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And he, drew, he brings it home in this. This is a very important passage of Scripture. This is 1 Corinthians 10. Neither be, a, be idolaters. You need some knowledge about what idolatry is. As were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. It's not just falling down to a stone or a rock or something carved and calling it a god. It's fornication. Fornication is idolatry. You need knowledge. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted were destroyed of serpents. What were they doing when the serpents came? Murmuring. Murmuring against Moses. That's an interesting, that is a very interesting story right there. That's written for us. Because they had no sooner got it out of their mouth than serpents were coming to get them. And Moses had to pray for them. But they were tempting God with their murmuring and complaining. See? As if God wasn't the one in charge. As if God wasn't the one that was meeting their needs. As if God was leading them through the wilderness to be mean to them. God was being good to them. Neither... Um, Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for our ensample, not example. They are our example, but now they're our ensample. An ensample is different than an example. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Trust me, folks, that's us. If you can hear my voice, the ends of the world are coming upon us. This world is rocking and reeling with the sin. The, the, um, Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. God wants us to focus here, right here. Now, all these things that happened unto them for in samples to us and they are written for our admonition upon that upon whom the ends of the world are come they were recorded way back then they didn't do any good for them <laughs> they were living in the middle of it so why write it down write it down for us wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall that's us Oh, I'm not like those people. Are you murmuring? Are you murmuring about how much money you have? Are you in Christ? Whoa. Are you murmuring because you're sick? Are you murmuring because you're anything? Who's in charge of you? He counts the hairs of your head. Do you think he said that in vain? The relationship from the heart, 
your heart to His has got to be pure. You know, you got to be holy. And they're, they're the promises of God. They're for us. The promises to the upright. The promises to those that fear God. The promises to uh, the righteous. <laughs> all of these things. They all happen. If you ever have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you can only be partaker through the Christ to get any of those. That's it. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Why? At the end of the world. Okay? What is it Jesus said is going to happen whenever he shows up? And they're standing in front of him. Oh, I was casting out demons in your name. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I didn't know you. Huh? What? Me, Lord? I did many wonderful works in your name. In your name. See, this is not Old Testament people. This is the people in the New Testament that understood the power of the name Jesus, that understood he was the Lord's Christ. They used that name for the power to effect miracles. And he tells them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I didn't know you. What does he say right here? Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. If you read Isaiah 5, you're going to see how the, the children of Israel had reached the pinnacle of knowledge, or so they seemed, so they thought. And they were waiting on the God to come. Then they were waiting, and God said, hey, look, when I come back, you don't want me to come right now. Go read Isaiah 5. Hell ha is going to enlarge herself if I come to you like you are right now. And she is going to receive you. Hell is going to receive you. And you want me to come. And you will not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of my hands. And therefore, hell hath enlarged herself to receive you at my coming. When Jesus got there, here's God's own son. What did they want to do? They wanted to kill him. These things are written for us upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay? That's us. Why? So that we don't fall after the same example of unbelief. You have to have a knowledge. You want the Holy... You must have the Holy Ghost if this is ever going to make any sense to you. So that you can live in the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. you got to have the Holy Ghost. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Before we leave this right here, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. What is it in Isaiah 53? All we like sheep have gone astray. How do we go astray? We have turned everyone to his own way. Therefore God hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Why? Because we're all doing our own thing. What are the people who were standing in front of Jesus that were casting out demons? They were doing it their own way. Their heart was not repentant to Scripture. When, when, the, when they were sealed with the Spirit of God and Scripture was brought to them after they called on Jesus' name, they would not yield their heart to the goodness of God and say, not my will, thine be done. Look, people, there's lots of healed people that are going to go to hell healed. There's lots of people who had the devils cast out of them. They're going to go to hell um, after they've had the devils cast out of them. There are lots of people who are going to have had miracles done on them. And they think that they're okay because the goodness of God. God came down and sat down on a car seat next to them. And they understood his goodness and his grace. And they said, well, surely he wouldn't know. God loves people. He's coming down. He comes to you. But that doesn't mean that you have repented. You have to repent your way. Did you set yourself free or did the word of God set you free? I think we've all set ourselves free at one time or another. But has God truly set you free? 
Free from what? Free from your own will. From your way. Why is Jesus the way? God wants you to know there is the way. And your way is not it. See? This word is pure. If you have a King James, it's pure. You can believe every punctuation and everything you'll think about it. Wherefore, let him that standeth take heed lest he fall. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. You know, it's funny how the devil gets you down. He isolates you. He gets you separated. And then he makes you think that, well, you know what? My circumstance just really isn't covered in the Bible. I need to reason this thing out a little bit. No. There's a verse for you that you won't have to, you do not have to, you just have to obey. We will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. It has nothing to do with your ability. Nothing. It's God is faithful. You just have to choose, not my will. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. See? Idolatry. He went through all of that. All the things in the Old Testament. He said, flee idolatry. Having your own will is idolatry. That's why it is iniquity. What is the definition of iniquity? Your will, your way, is iniquity. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondman. And I have broken, I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. We can't even get ourselves to go upright, folks. You have got to have the Holy Ghost, and he will make you go upright. He made you. He goes, I created you, Jacob. Isaiah 50, 43. I created you, oh Jacob. I formed you into Israel. He forms us, see? He made us go up. I broke the bands of your yoke. I made you go upright. Why? So that you would repent your own way. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That's the whole purpose of God. What is all about learning the Bible? What is all about the do's, the don'ts? What is all of this about? He, wa he wants to bring you to a place that he has prepared for you. It is a place that his creation will be overcome with the ecstasy of his goodness, you will praise him continually. You will worship him in spirit and truth. Why? Because he sent the angel before them in the Old Testament. Why were those things written? For us. Upon whom the end of the world has come? Yeah, for us. Why did he send that cloud? The pillar of fire, the cloud, in the day, the fire at night, to keep thee in the way. See? So that we would know, upon whom the end of the world has come, he leads us. Why? To keep us into the way. So that he can bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Now, to them, beware of him, and obey his voice, and provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions, because my name is in him. That's why the, the, they murmured against Moses and the serpents came immediately. Started biting. They're dying. Thousands. Immediately. But the chastisement of our peace was laid upon Christ. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. This is for us today. Why were those things written? Well, they're written for our in samples. Taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> an example is something you look at. An example is something that you taste, feel, and touch so that you know all about it. See? Those things are written for us as our in sample. So that we know all about it. So that we could make a really good choice in the end of the day. So that we don't stand in front of Jesus and hear him say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. 
I didn't know you. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift who were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. He's talking about Christians in the church. They got briars and thorns and they're going to be burned and they don't know it because they won't let go of their own way. This will we do if God permit. And what he's saying here is going on to perfection. That's Hebrews 6. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. See? Repentance from dead works. You cannot go back and do the things that you did before the Christ. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will let you. But it will cost you. Not like when you did not name the name of Christ. It'll be far different. And you have a quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. See? Children of disobedience. You're going to see there's also children of wrath. They're not in Christ. Those are the children of the world, children of wrath. Wrath is not going to fall on God's kids. But if you're disobedient, there is a spirit at work in you. And it's not God's. See? Among whom also we all had our own conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind were by nature the children of wrath. See, by nature, children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. It's going to take ages to come for God. Well, look at this. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Not going to hell is but the beginning, folks. The richness of his peace now in the midst of the storm. When the battle comes, knowing that you possess the victory. Before the victory comes over the horizon. Knowing that your father has all power and authority. That you have believed this word which is pure. And there's nothing in this life that can shake you from believing that this word is pure. And before you see the victory, you obtain the victory. That when it comes, you are a partaker. And even in that richness of his grace, and that kindness that he does to us, it's going to take ages to come to reveal to us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus. <sighs> Ages. Yeah. <laughs> For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. For works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. What should, say, what should we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace be abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that to... Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. 
therefore we are buried with him by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him in the body of sin, that the body of sin might be destroyed. You want to get that destroyed and buried. And henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Okay. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. See? Sin is a transgression of the law. Now, the law is not a bad thing. The law is a good thing that the whole world might become guilty before God. But you're set free from that when you died. And when you kill the old man and you circumcise him from you and you leave him in the baptism waters... That's a good place to be. Alive unto Christ. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield your members, uh, yourselves, servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you bear, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and iniquity to an iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, you were freed from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you are walking in the way, Jesus is the way and not your way. And I was saying, uh, and Caiaphas, being the high priest, the word of God came into John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country round about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Now that is, and that is, well, I'll tell you what, I think we're going to stop right here. When John the Baptist came, and he preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. That's how the people got the idea of salvation, the knowledge of salvation. It's not an idea. Got the knowledge of, of salvation. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy for repentance. And begin not to say within ourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able to use stones to raise up children in Abraham. Now also... It's the fruits, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. And that's what God's looking for in our life. And he wrote down everything in the Old Testament so we would, we would understand that that was written for us so that we don't lust after evil things because we don't want to be destroyed from the midst of the church. We don't want to have God, don't want to go in front of God one day. And he said, yeah, but... I didn't know you. You were doing your own thing. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. 
they understood the power of Christ's name. You, when you believe as scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So cease from repent from works of darkness, re repentance unto dead works, only possible through the Holy Ghost. Only possible through the Holy Ghost. And that's why we preach, get the Holy Ghost. Corpus Christi, come back next week. We're going to study the next, uh, um, the next part of the doctrine of Christ.